Well, hey there, friends. I'm so glad you're back for day two of introduction week for our It's All About That Book Bible study this year on Psalm 119. Taking uh, this first week to have some introductory days, it's so important for us to get that foundational clarity of how the study's going to work, to get everything in order so that we can have a good experience as we move through our meditation on these verses. Today, we're going to talk about the structure of the study. We're mainly gonna zoom in on the 10 days that's going to happen during each two week period. But I do wanna take just a moment to recap the overall structure of the study. So the overall big picture in simplicity of it's all about that book is this. Psalm 119 is divided into 22 sections in scripture. Over the course of this year, we're going to cover each of those 22 sections. Every month of this year, with the exception of January and December, we will cover two of the sections. The first one will start on the first of the month. The next one will start on the 15th of the month. And then for January, we're only gonna be doing one starting on the 15th. For December, we're only gonna be doing one starting on the 1st. We hope that you're gonna to choose to join in for all of the sections of Psalm 119, but because we'll be getting a fresh start every 1st and 15th of the months of the year, then you can join in as it works for you. Just know the door is always open for you to be a part of this experience. So looking at the 10 day structure, I say 10 days because each time we start a new section, either on the 1st or the 15th, we're gonna be sharing a study plan. It'll look like this, okay? And it'll follow the same basic pattern, but there are going to be some specific things that are different for each one. So I wanna to talk to you about that because each of these study plans includes 10 days of suggested plans. Now, why 10 days? Well, because we want to give you some margin. We know life gets in the way. Sometimes maybe you'll want a little bit of extra time and you don't have it that day to finish out what you were doing on day three, so to speak, or whatever. And so you want to spend some more time the next day on that. This will give you some margin. There might be a day here or there where you can't get to it. Life happens sometimes. Emergencies happen. And we don't want to have it structured so tightly that you don't have any room for margin. At the end of the 10 days of suggestions, we're gonna also give you an extra suggestion. That way, if you flow through all 10 days right on track and you've got those extra four or even more days, depending on the end of the month, how many days in the month there are, you'll have some extra things to do with that specific section of Psalm 119. You can also you know, create and just follow the Holy Spirit's lead of, of other things you want to do in zooming in on it. Hopefully that's going to be a doable plan for you. The idea would be that you do one of the suggestions each day that you don't try to tackle a bunch of them all at once that's like trying to eat five meals all at one meal time right it's just too much and spiritually we take in the nourishment of god's word in increments and so we've got this laid out and have thought it through prayed it through and feel like it'll be a really good plan for you on your introduction sheet that you're following this week you will see the basic 10-day plan we're going to follow that same basic pattern pattern, you know, section after section after section. And I want to talk to you about that specifically. And I'm going to do that in just a moment. But first, I want to uh, specifically zoom in on a pattern you're going to also see with each of the 10 day suggestions. It'll show up every single time throughout the study. And that's what we're calling a 3M pattern. It stands for meet, meditate and memorize. See, we want each of those dynamics to be a part of your time while you're doing this study. It would be easy to just jump in and try to get it done, you know, check that Bible study box. We're all prone to do that. But instead, we're gonna give you that prompt in the suggestion to meet. And by that, we mean meet with God. Meet with God. Treat this time as a moment of your day where you're sitting down with the Lord, God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, 
and you're communing with him and talking with him and fellowshipping with him about the words he shared with you in this section of Psalm 119. Now, that might seem obvious, like, yeah, of course, right? But you know what? In our day-to-day -day lives, in our humanity, in our let's check everything off on my to-do list today, sometimes the obvious gets hidden beneath all of our stuff. And so we're going to consistently put that word meet and that direction of meet with God through prayer to encourage you to pause, take a deep breath, remind yourself of what this moment is, and settle into this amazing privilege of getting to fellowship with God in his word. During that moment of meeting with God and praying, you know, express to him that you want him to teach you. Let him know your heart is open. Confess anything that's resistant to wanting to learn or to even being in that moment. Allow the Holy Spirit to just settle you into his presence as you take that moment to meet with God before you just jump into the task of meditating. That second M is meditating. And that's where more of the effort is going to come from. That effort of digging into the scripture, looking at it from different perspectives and angles. And we're going to give you suggested ways to do that for each of the 10 days that we've got listed there on the study plan. You'll notice, uh, as we showed you in that graphic on your introduction sheet, that there is a pattern of how we'll do that. We will utilize that same pattern for each section, and I'll talk more about that with you in a moment. During this meditate time is where you're really going to see that journal that you're going to get to use for the study really comes into play because you're going to want to write things down. You're going to want to keep a record of what God is showing you as you spend the 10 days meditating on those verses. And then the third direction there is to memorize. If you've been a part of any Bible study that I've done, you've probably heard me talking about how important Bible memorization is. I've often been known to say that I believe for myself that memorizing scripture has been uh, the single most effective discipleship tool that the Holy Spirit has used in my life. It is through the process of memorizing scripture that's often messy, often can take a long time, takes a lot of effort, a lot of attention, a lot of repetition, but it's through that process that I meditate on God's word and that I begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit really speaking the deeper truths of that word into my life specifically. That's where the words of God's word jump off the page at me and become alive and active in my life. It's through Bible memorization. Now, over the years, I've heard so many people say, oh, I can't memorize. I'm not one of those people. I don't know how to do that. I've heard it all. But I have told people over and over again, we are all capable of memorizing. It's just for some of us, if we've not used that muscle in our brains to memorize, it's weak. And I get that. Mine can get weak too. I go through seasons a lot of times of memorizing and then I'm not memorizing for a while. And then when I get back into it, it's like, whoo, it's like going to the gym if you haven't been there for a while. But the more you work that memorization muscle, the more that muscle will strengthen. And you'll find you get stronger and stronger in memorizing God's word. And I believe you'll find it's some of the most effective ways of meditating on God's word. So yes, we've got it as meat, and meditate and memorize. But I would say really the memorization is a part of the meditating. It's just you've got to give distinctive effort, intentional effort to doing that. I'm sure that there are some of you who are going to just skip over that part because you've convinced yourself that you can't. But I want to encourage you right from the get-go, try it this time. Even if you just choose to memorize one verse out of each section, that would be 22 verses by the end of the year if you do each of the sections. There are some rich truths that God can just embed in your heart. And the beautiful thing about memorizing scripture is that once it's in there, oh, it's open for conversation at any time. You don't have to be sitting at your table with your coffee and having a Bible open to have conversation with God. He can talk to you when you're sitting in the carpool line waiting for your kids. He can talk to you when you're in the grocery store. He can talk to you when you lay down at night and you can't sleep because he'll bring those words back to remembrance because they're there. It's like learning a language. And the more you learn the language of God's word, then God can begin to have deeper and deeper 
deeper conversations with you. God's always speaking, but we don't always understand because we don't know the language. But the more we hide the language of his word in our hearts, it just opens up all kinds of conversations that we can have with the Holy Spirit with deep and rich understanding. Regarding memorization, I'll share this with you personally. Probably over 10 years ago, I started trying to memorize Psalm 119, and it was a lofty goal for me at the time. That year, I got through about verse 100, and then I kind of fizzled off, and I always felt really bad about that. So several years later, I came back, and I'm like, I'm going to do it. And so I, it took me a while to review. You know, it certainly came uh, easier than it did the first time, but I hadn't reviewed it in a long time. And so it took me a while, months to review to get to about verse 100. I got a little further past that, and then I fizzled off again. And I did that several times. Well, last year, I was meditating on Psalm 119, and I said, this is the year. And again, it took me months to get back to where I had already, you know, gotten to on some of those prior attempts. But last year, I did finish memorizing Psalm 119, and what a blessing it was. But you know what? Even now, I'm going to have to refresh that because I haven't reviewed it over the last several months every day like I was doing when I was really active in memorizing it. All that to say, that was a very messy, very long experience of memorizing Psalm 119, but the blessings abounded in it. We grow in our strength of memorization as we give attention to it. And honestly, I will tell you, I believe it's one of the best things you can do in your walk with Jesus. So I hope you won't leave that part out. So meet, meditate, and memorize. Those are going to be the three dynamics of every single day of our suggested study plans. It's simple, but it's so rich as we give ourselves into the practice of these things. So let's talk now about the specific 10 days. On the 1st and the 15th, as we start a new section, we will share that study plan with you. You'll always see on the very first day, your meditation is going to involve reading, reading that section. It's not just going to be reading it from whatever version you're choosing to read from, but we're also gonna encourage reading it from at least two other translations. A great place to uh, you know, access other translations is biblegateway.com. You can just type in the scripture that you want to uh, read on the search bar and then you know um, peruse through their variations of versions and I encourage you to look at different versions keep in mind though there are versions of scripture that are word-for-word -word translations the NASB which is what I study from and what we're providing you know a copy of that for you uh, that is a word-for-word -word translation the ESV is more word-for-word in regard to the original language. Then you've got some other uh, translations that are more what we would call phrase for phrase. The NIV would be one like that. And then there are uh, translations that really are more a paraphrase. They're more like a commentary, things like uh, the message or the passion, even the living Bible. The living Bible or the new living translation would land somewhere in between uh, phrase for phrase and and that commentary or paraphrase, all right? So it's important that we keep that in mind as we go to study scripture. The beauty of the phrase for phrase or you know, even the paraphrase is they're often more readable to the language that we employ in our culture today. However, we miss some of the richness when we don't look at that word for word translation. So you're gonna have time to peruse multiple kinds on that first day when you're reading. And usually we're gonna give a suggestion that you make some, you know, marks where you, a word, you know, and, and the way that that, that idea is, is shared you know, just really uh, impacts you or tends to grab your attention. On the second day, it's always going to involve copying. And we're going to encourage you to copy side by side. 
because I'm going to be teaching from the NASB, I'm always gonna encourage you to copy from the NASB on the left side, and then you're gonna to wanna to choose one of the other translations and copy on the right side and try to do it line by line. That way you can really compare and we'll have some suggestions for you on that. So first day's read, second day's copy. Days three through seven are going to be set aside for meditation, and we will have varying suggestions of how to meditate on that section. There are gonna be some things that are gonna be repetitive from section to section. For instance, we're often going to have you look at the uh, specific things that those verses reveal about God. We're often also going to have you look at the distinctions of what uh, words for the word are used in that section. We're gonna talk about those more on another day of our introduction week, but that would be things like law, precepts, commandments, judgments, ordinances, those kind of things. So we'll talk more about that, but those things are gonna be consistent through each of the sections. And it's gonna be amazing, the things that we'll see and the depth that will take us to as we look at that. But then on the subsequent days of meditation, there will be some varying uh, suggestions for meditation based on what that section really is about. So day one is reading, day two is copying, days three through seven are meditation, day eight is always going to be the day that we will share some teaching. I will share some teaching on those eight verses. I wanted to do it in this order because I want you to meditate first and not just take what I say at the beginning and then meditate from that standpoint. You in your Bible, you meeting with God, you meditating on scripture. And then it's like meeting with a friend as I'm gonna come alongside and share some things that I saw in my own meditation of those same verses that you've been meditating on. What about days nine and 10? They're gonna be reserved for praying the verses that we've been meditating on. We're gonna spend one of our days in our introduction week where I'm gonna explain more how to do that. But I'm believing those are gonna be some of the most life-giving prayer times for us because we have been meditating on this word and now we're gonna really pray through it with an emphasis on praying for ourselves those verses and then also praying them for someone else. And then, as I already shared, at the end of the 10 days, those suggestions, we're gonna also offer an additional suggestion if you choose to continue during those days of margin that you have left. So hopefully that gives you more insight about the overall structure of the study and also specifically uh, what each one of those 10 days is going to hold. Specifically for you to get in the word today, we've got more sections of Psalm 119 and we've also got that prayer from verse 32 of Psalm 119. Praying as you're preparing and getting introduced to this study that God would enlarge your heart so that you would love his word more. I'll definitely share more with you about that in the teaching video on section three. It's, it's one of those truths from Psalm 119 that is just embedded in my heart and my experience with the Lord. But here's the thing, just putting it in a nutshell. Our hearts, left to ourselves, our hearts are really too small to have the heart affection for God's word that we, we should. You know, as I talk to believers all throughout the years that I've been in ministry, and I also know in my own heart, we can be so resistant to the, to the blessing and the treasure of God's word. We don't love God's word like we should. Our hearts are too small. But the beautiful thing is that God can enlarge our heart. That's one of the prayers that David prayed right here. He prayed into God, enlarging his heart. He said, I'll run the way of your commandments. In other words, God, I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do, but I'm gonna trust you to enlarge my heart. And so I would just encourage you on this day two of introduction week that you ask the Lord, God, enlarge my heart so that I will have the capacity to love your word more than I do today. And I believe if you pray that with a sincere heart, God's going to answer that prayer. And you're going to see that answer come alive as you spend time in his word through this experience this year. I'll see you again tomorrow for day three of introduction. Enjoy your time in God's word today. <music>